Hi and welcome back to Everyday Physics. This is the second video in the first topic. So the first topic is looking at how does a street lamp work. In this video we're going to look at electric charges and Coulomb's law. In this video we're going to be considering static or stationary which means not moving charges. In nature there's two types of charges. We've got positive charges and negative charges. As you probably know, all the matter around us is made up of atoms. Atoms consist of a nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons, right in the middle of the atom. Around the atom we have electrons. Electrons are negative charges. When atoms become charged, it's because they're gaining or losing these electrons. They don't become charged by gaining or losing the positive protons in the nucleus because it's much harder getting a charge out of a nucleus than taking an electron away from the electron cloud surrounding the atom. So to make matter become charged, we need to take electrons away from it. Electrons have a very small amount of charge. The charge on an electron is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, so a very small number. But because there's so many atoms in the matter around us, it's possible to get relatively large charges. Some materials, such as metals, only hold on to their electrons very loosely. So it's quite easy to move the electrons away from a metal. Other materials, such as plastic or wood, hold on to their electrons much more tightly, so it's much harder to remove electrons from these materials. When it's hard to remove electrons from the material, the material is called a non-conductor. And as we'll see in later videos, non-conductors do not conduct an electric current. A material that can easily lose electrons is called a conductor, and we can have currents flowing through these now it's hard to see atoms because they're so tiny, but we can see the effects of atoms gaining and losing electrons. So what we're going to look at now is a few demonstrations where materials are gaining and losing electrons. Here I've got a plastic rod and a piece of fur. Fur gives up electrons very easily, so when I rub the plastic rod against the fur, electrons will be transferred from the fur to the plastic rod, which should make the plastic rod become negative. So let's give that a go. Okay, now I'm going to move, hold my plastic rod near this electroscope. When I touch the plastic rod to the electroscope, electrons are transferred from the plastic rod to the electroscope. And then because the electroscope is made of metal, these electrons are conducted along these metal arms so that both these arms have extra negative electrons. Now because like charges repel, negative charges will try and move apart, the two sheaths on the electroscope move apart. If I touch the top of the electroscope, I can ground it removing the electrons from the electroscope and sending them back through my feet to the ground. So you can see, now it's neutral again. This happens to you on a dry day. When you rub your feet on carpet, the carpet gives you extra electrons. If you then touch somebody or touch an object, you'll feel a sh an electric shock. That's the electrons leaving you very quickly to go to the other person or the other object, and it can hurt quite a lot. For the next demonstration, I'm going to be using a Van de Graaff generator. When the Van de Graaff generator is turned on, electrons are moved away from this sphere at the top, and so the sphere becomes positive. What we're going to see is that if we move a conductor, like this small metal sphere near it, the big positive sphere at the top will steal the electrons from this lit little metal sphere here. So let's move this sphere close to the big sphere. So as you can see, the electrons are, 
as you can see, the electrons are transferred very quickly, causing the spark. Let's have another look at that in slow motion. Now physics is a quantitative science, so we like to have equations to describe how things work. So what we're going to have a quick look at now is Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law tells us how much force there are between charges. So for now you can think of force as a push or a pull. Later in the course we'll be looking into more details about what a force actually is. So Coulomb's law tells us that the force between two charged particles is given by K, which is Coulomb's constant, times the magnitude of the first charge, times the magnitude of the second charge, and all divided by the square of the distances between those two charges. What we're going to look at now is an example which we can solve with Coulomb's law. Let's do a quantitative example of how we can use Coulomb's law to solve problems. Imagine that we had a positive charge of 5.0 coulombs and a small distance away we had a negative charge of 2.0 coulombs with a negative. The distance between these charges is given by 22 centimetres. And we're asked what force is felt by the positive charge. So to calculate the size of this force, we have to use Coulomb's law. F is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now K is Coulomb's constant, so in a test you'd be told what it was. So K is given by 8.988 times 10 to the 9, and the units are newtons, meters squared, and then Coulomb to the minus 2. Now R, the distance, is equal to 22 centimeters. We need to convert that into meters. So to convert from centimetres to metres, we divide by 100. So this is equal to 0 0.22 metres. Q1 is this first charge, and Q2 is the second charge. And so to calculate the magnitude of this force, which means the size of this force, we just substitute everything in here. So we've got 8.988 times 10 to the 9 times Q1, which is 5.0, times 2.0, and then this is all over 0 0.22 squared. Now, it doesn't matter if we put the positive or negative in front of the 2 here, because that positive or negative is going to tell us about the direction of the force, and we'll be considering that later anyway. So if you want to put the negative in, that's fine, but for now, we'll just leave it off. So you need to enter this into your calculator. To enter 8.988 times 10 to the 9 on your calculator, you type in 8.988 and then push the EXP button and then type in 9. So enter this into your calculator and you should end up with 1.857 times 10 to the 12 newtons. Now one thing to note is that each of these values up here has been given to two significant figures. That means that we've got two numbers for each of these. So we've got 5 and 0, that's two numbers, 2 and 2, and 2 and 0. So we should give our answer to two significant figures as well. So we should write this as 1.9 times 10 to the 12 newtons. And that's to 2 sig. Now, we were asked to find the force, and for a force we actually need to give a direction as well. So because we've got a positive charge and a negative charge, these are going to attract each other. So the positive force charge is going to move towards the negative charge, and the negative charge will move towards the positive charge. So the force on the positive charge is towards the right. So we write towards 
the right and then we finished answering that question. So in this video we've seen that there's two types of charge, positive and negative charge. We've considered what happens when these charges are stationary. If we put two like charges together, two positive or two negative, then there's a force between them and they repel each other. If we put two unlike charges together, a positive and a negative, then there's a force between them and they attract each other. In later videos, we're going to consider what happens when these charges start moving and how this is relevant to how a street lamp works. Thanks very much to these people for providing images with a Creative Commons license that we made use of during this video.